Good morning, good morning, good morning. <clears throat> the weather is refusing to improve. It's rained all night. <clears throat> and we've still got low white cloud. And what are we? We're the, I don't know, end of May. Anyway, you'll park there by the look of you. How are you? I hope you're well. I'm bang up to date with the videos at the moment. It's, uh, I've always said I'll just do these videos for me, you know, for reference. There'll come a time when. Uh, well, I still, I think you can get audio transcripts off of YouTube anyway. <clears throat> but I always keep all the originals. Very good friend of mine who's in the UK at the moment, lives in Japan. Uh, had a big channel, did lots of interviews. And then uh, fell foul of <clears throat> some rule or other. I think it was probably to do with COVID. And uh, his channel got removed, deleted by YouTube. So all that work, and he never kept, uh, he relied on YouTube to do the uh, recording for him, you know, he just did a live broadcast and didn't keep any copies or download it. I mean, you think, I mean, at least you think he would have made a token effort to download his channel when they told him that it was gonna be deleted if he didn't watch out. But uh, no, that's all gone. But I'm pleased to say, and you'll be pleased to know, so I've got a copy of uh, all nearly 400 videos, which uh, uh, at 20 minutes each, or 20, 30 minutes each to make the maths easier, uh, uh, comes to just under 200 hours of, uh, of video viewing. Pleasure. Well, probably there's about five hours of actual video viewing pleasure, but, but, but the rest of it is all still viewing. So, <clears throat> I thought I'd just talk a little bit about uh, the, the videos because there's weird, there's weird stuff goes on with these videos. Uh, there are... My, my most uh, popular channel, my most popular video is one on uh, converting a very old and redundant file format into a newer file format. So if you've got a load of documents on this old file format and you can't read them anymore because it's a proprietary format and uh, you need to buy the software to read them. Um, you, need, you need to convert them, up, upgrade them, you know, to this new file format so you can read them and have access to them. And this is by far and away my most popular video. Got thousands of you, tens of thousands of views. So that is like, just give you some little uh, hint as to how weird YouTube is. Now I know dentistry is a sort of a niche market and to be honest with you, I'd be quite happy if I called a meeting and 50 dentists came or 30 dentists came and, and just to listen to what I had to say about, you know, dentistry and perhaps share a bit of my experience, etc., etc. Uh, I'd be dead chuffed. So the fact that my videos get 30 to 50 views, oh, you know, I think is amazing. I think uh, probably 29 of those are bots. So, you know, it's not that amazing, but there's probably 29 bots all over the world that have been told to watch every new YouTube video. And, uh, you know, some AI somewhere is watching them all. But, um, You know, it never ceases to amaze me these people, they've got 100,000 subscribers and they're, they want 200,000. You know, I mean, I know it's all about the money and the money's all about the subscriber numbers, etc. But, and then, and then in turn, that's advertising, eyeballs, etc., etc. But, um, When you've got 100,000 subscribers, you've always got, you've already got an audience the size of Wembley Stadium. 
you're talking to Wembley Stadium for goodness sake. I mean, if you're a rock star or a comedian or something, you are playing Wembley or Wembley Arena, a hundred thousand, you know, not even a hundred thousand people, I wouldn't think, but on YouTube, you've got a hundred thousand people watching you, and you're and you're like, oh yeah, now I want two Wembleys, I want two hundred thousand. I mean, let's just keep our feet on the ground here, all right? I am never going to get a hundred thousand. I, mean, I might do, if like I die and like in fifty years' time, people realise I'm a genius and that I knew everything about everything, then I might get a lot of views. You know, I might people might write books about me and how I was a financial genius and a clinical genius, an academic genius. Uh, and uh, physical manipulative micro surgical skills of a genius and all that and uh, you know I I'm gonna get like everybody else get the recognition post-mortem but you know that's no use to me now obviously but you know, ask my grandchildren to realize what a genius they had as a grandfather <coughs> <coughs> I've had um, one video recently that stood out uh, on uh, how to deal with racism in the surgery. And, you know, it's quite true that when people talk about clickbaity titles, I've never ever tried to use a clickbaity title. My titles, as you know, generally tend to get drawn from the actual content, the video. And that's because in post-production I listened to the video again. I mean, to be honest with you, I put it on uh, 1.5 speed because it is quite boring. <laughs> it's not boring for you. No, it's not. I'm not saying that. I'm saying obviously for you it's new and exciting. But for me it's boring because I've heard it before. You know, it's already come out. I can, when I'm talking, I can I can think of someone, and the net, a good, another good point, to make would be that and then of course I make it and uh, so for me uh, obviously <clears throat> this drive to work is having done it like several thousand times now it's not necessarily exciting uh, and to have to get to work and then upload the video and then do the whole damn thing again uh, makes it doubly unexciting but um, so I always just pick out something some weird title which makes sense if you watch the video but otherwise looks like completely random but um, I don't I don't try and use clickbaity titles but this one word in that video racism I think probably it got picked up by Google's YouTube algorithm and got promoted a bit you know got got on the front page of a couple of people's feeds and and also uh, I think racism is a um, you know racism is a funny thing I'm not gonna make this thing about racism because I'm not I'm not trying to get that sort of response again because I had to turn comments off on that video because people have just been idiots and sort of telling me uh, what their view was on racism and uh, to be honest with you I'm not that interested I'm, I'm not <laughs> I mean it may come to you no surprise to you that I'm not that interested in anybody else's views on anything <laughs> okay <laughs> what I'm interested in is building up a a model in my head of uh, the world and using it to make sound decisions uh, basically uh, for my family for my finances if not, not so much for my health <laughs> um, and then um, and then refining that model all the time refining it improving it um, not not really chucking bits of it out although I have chucked a bit out about you know me thinking that the human uh, race has got over being belligerent and just beating the crap out of each other all the time Although I've always said that, you know, we are in the Middle Ages, you know, we've still got wars all over the world, we've got disease, we've got corruption, 
we've got religion, we've got all the worst aspects of what we look back on the Middle Ages and, and, and think, oh God, I wouldn't like to have lived then. But I think in like two or three hundred years, people will look back on this time and say, well, I wouldn't have liked to have lived then. You know, all the uh, disease and, and uh, authoritarianism, collectivism. So, so I really thought that I'd been born into like a period of sustained peace. Um, but then, you know, it's all kicked off again, isn't it? Everywhere. Everywhere. There's not there are not two nations that can live next door to each other without fighting. So, that's, that's my uh, paradigm has shifted slightly now towards just expecting us to be in a permanent state of warfare. And I think that the problem is that as the society goes downhill, and this is not me just saying, oh, this is, this is the, you know, things are terrible, worse than when I was a boy, blah, blah, blah. Um, society's going to hell in a handbasket and all that. The downfall of Western civilization as we know it. This is me realizing that we are going to be in, um, you know, it all dates back to 71, 72. Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard. Americans were able to print dollars at will. Um, in order for the dollar to be the currency in use all over the world, the reserve, you know, current countries have their own currency first and then the dollar is a reserve currency. So in order for them to have some dollars, they need to um, give the United States something for the, get dollars in return. And so the United States has had this, what's called the exorbitant privilege of having countries all over the world, you know, but obviously mainly China, send them stuff, you know, that's been dug out of the ground, manufactured and uh, packaged and then uh, sent to America in return for basically what is just, a, you know, entries on a computer keyboard or, or just bits of paper. And the uh, America has, by definition, has to run a trade deficit to be the world reserve currency. It has to, has to uh, import more stuff than it exports because it wants to. Its main export is dollars. You could say that if you count dollars as an export, then it doesn't run a trade deficit because it, the, the dollars are an export. But anyway, we're getting a long way from clickbaity titles of racism. But the point is that the, the more uh, dollars you issue and the more you have to pay interest, if, if you, the way it works is just very quickly, the uh, American uh, government writes a bond, which is an IOU, and nobody really wants to buy them these days, so it sells it to the Federal Reserve. And the Federal Reserve Bank then uh, authorizes the Treasury to print the money and so the government has given away an IUU and in return has got a load of money. And the Federal Reserve has authorised a load of money and in return got an IOU. So everybody's happy and all of a sudden a load of money just springs into existence. The IOU spring into existence and the, and the money springs into existence at the same time. Well, the problem is that there's interest is due on these IOUs. So let's say if you wrote an IOU for $100 and it paid interest, there's no way you're going to get that IOU back for just $100. You're going to need 105 or 110 or whatever. So in order to get that extra five or 10, you have to write another IOU. And then you don't just need five or 10, you need 10 or 20. And so um, the whole system is, that's why we call it a debt-based monetary system because it's all about issuing debt and financing debt and eventually the whole thing collapses because you can see that you know you can see that you can't you can't write IOUs to pay the interest on the IOUs that you've already written especially with interest rates going up like they are you know people want five percent six percent on these uh, on these I government IOUs now and um, <clears throat> 
So as things, uh, so, so what you're going to do is you're going to start to see things getting a little bit weird. I mean, uh, they're going to start getting a little bit weird, then they're going to continue getting a lot weird, and then they're finally going to finish by, by being completely crazy. And it's just, you know, if you're looking, if you know where to look, you can just start to see the signs of it. So, for example, the Chancellor, that gimlet-eyed twerp, who uh, put a ta one tax down, put the overall tax burden up, and then told people he'd cut their taxes. <coughs> He's got a problem in that um, the personal allowances now haven't been raised, and not likely to be raised until 2028 or something and then um but he's kept the triple lock on the pension the, the state pension which basically means that pension goes up by the highest of either any increase in wages prices or two and a half percent whichever is the highest um, and so what's happened is you've got the state now where some people on the state pension are now paying income tax because the allowances are, are, have been frozen and the income and the state pension's gone up. That was never the intention. <clears throat> Certainly, never the intention that anybody on a pension should be paid enough to pay income tax. I mean, really, something's gone seriously wrong there. And it's because basically the threshold at which you pay income tax has come down, probably more than it should have. Although you could argue that the pensions are probably or not more than they would have so um so all these little stupid things now that's going to have to be someone's going to have to decide what to do about that do you give pensions pensioners their pension and just say look it's not it's only a little bit of tax don't worry about it well they're not going to be happy with that are they or do you you know the knee-jerk response is to say oh we'll just exempt any pensioners that are uh, affected from paying income tax can't exempt all pensioners from paying income tax because some pensioners are very wealthy and still have got you know quite a decent chunk of income but we're just talking about state pensioners so what do you do do you exempt state pensioners from paying income tax i mean you can imagine how well that's going to go not to mention the complication can you imagine the complication of um uh, from the inland revenue hmrc would you imagine what they would say if they said no we're going to uh, exempt uh, state pensioners from income tax. But that, if you look at that, and you know, that's a very minor story on the news. Very minor. And, uh, you know, probably, you know, just more sort of thing that might pop up on a politics program and anything. And yet, it's a sign, it's a Fender regime sign. It's a sign that, you know, the money's not working. You've got to have sound money. You can't have this stupid, constantly shrinking fear, money. And uh, this is why people are turning to things like gold and Bitcoin as a or property as a hedge against inflation, but a hedge against insanity. And so uh, again, you know, just try and, if you can, just get yourself out of the insane system because it's going to get more insane. Because if Labour gets elected, you can bet your life it's going to become double insane. Really, because they 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 don't really have like a serious economist in in the whole party. They're the party of Keynes, the money printing party. Uh, my mother always said, uh, Labour's a tax and spend. They tax you and spend it, tax and spend. And uh, the what with the the problem with the public at the moment they want the government to give them everything everything they want the government to give them a house they want the government to give them enough to eat on minimum wage they want a pension they want health care they want education they want a job you know They're, they want everything anything that goes wrong they want compensation So anyway, cut a long story short, just, you know, as I say, just get yourself ready 
there's this thing going round about, you know, the toys have said that you need to have three days worth of supplies. This is just scaremongering. Nobody in this country is ever going to be reduced to the point where they, they're going to need to go to an upstairs bedroom and, and live off of the food and water that they've got in that bedroom. This is an American thing. The American, the Americans who literally do think that zombies are real are constantly preparing for the zombie apocalypse. And uh, I personally, I think it's just another tactic to keep the population in a state of constant anxiety, you know, because governments know that anxiety is good. If they can uh, at least try and make sure that the public don't think it's the government that's causing the anxiety, that would be bad. In the same way as the government causes inflation and then and then make sure that the population thinks that it's Vladimir Putin or uh, greedy businesses or tight employers etc that are causing the problem. Sorry. So yeah, so I got about two and a half thousand views on this racism. What's it? So I'm like, all right. Well, I mean, I don't know why. I suppose racism is a. Nobody really at dental school ever says to dental students, "Look, here's how you handle racism." And I think you know, going abroad is also it's a great uh, education. Like I've just been to Tunisia, right? Tunisia is, uh, it's not, you know, like uh, Mauritius in terms of sunshine, but it shines a lot of the time. I mean, you know, there's a lot of sun in, in Tunisia, which is why people go there. And I would expect Tunisia to be covered in solar panels, absolutely covered in solar panels. Free electricity. Who doesn't want free electricity? Well, apparently the Tunisians don't because they did not see a single solar panel in the whole of Tunisia. So next time the government says to you, know, why haven't you got solar panels? You can say, as soon as Tunisia puts one up, I'll, I'll get them. But at the moment, you know, and it's the same with Gambia. I've been to Gambia, very sunny place, very hot, sunny, free electricity. Who doesn't want that? Apparently the Gambians don't because they haven't got a panel anywhere. So, you know, it, it makes you think twice, doesn't it, about all these people that are saying about renewables and solar panels and that sort of thing. If the, if the sunniest countries in the world haven't got solar panels, and why on earth have we got them all over our roofs? School's... Uh, out for half turn. Anyway, that's my um, that's my take on the uh, the election as it's playing out. Personally, I, I think we're going to we'll be in for five years of labour, but it's just a case of uh, how to stay out of their way, you know, because they're quite likely to nationalise the railways and, and the electricity and the water and, uh, you know, how are they going to get the money to pay for that? Oh, I don't know. Oh, off of me. Off of you? Off of me. Actually, more off of you, because I'm pretty well insulated. All right. Okay. <laughs> I've got the best strategy for not paying tax. I don't earn any money. All right, see you later, bye.